So welcome to Visual Bookmarking with Pinterest. Um, this is part three of a four-part social media webinar series that we've been doing to celebrate Digital Learning Day. I've done it both as a five-part and a four-part, so um, this is the, the third part. Um, and uh, this is specifically trying, thinking about Pinterest um, with regards to how to include it or integrate it into um, instruction for adults. Um, many people have used Pinterest, or at least my experience has been so far that many people have used Pinterest but have never thought about using it in education. And so we'll talk a little bit about the basics of Pinterest, um, what it is, uh, how to use it in its kind of designed way, um, and then why would it be useful in, in education and some actual um, uses of it in education. So first of all, Pinterest, the name is Pin Interest, you could say, or, or people say it lots of different ways. Actually, I've heard people say Pinterest, Pin Interest, but it's Pinterest. Um, it is really a bulletin board or a series of bulletin boards that you can create online <clears throat> with the idea, I think it feels related to the idea of inspiration boards or um, if you've had a bulletin board in your house or, or somewhere where you were maybe getting ready for a wedding or for um, remodeling your kitchen or bathroom and you want to take all the images you find in the world and pin them up there and, and sort of see it as a, as a giant inspiration space. Uh, that's what I think Pinterest is used for mostly, but the basic mechanics of Pinterest is that it's a space um, where you can um, save images from online websites or that you upload yourself. Um, the terminology is a little different just because we're talking about um, pins and boards, but really it's very similar to other things that we do with computers or online. Um, this is what Pinterest looks like. So it's uh, it's a feed of lots of lots of images with little descriptions and you can follow people uh, or follow boards of information. But let's get into the actual terminology. So um, if you think of pins as, in this case, visual bookmarks, they're very similar to um, the files that you might create on your computer and you save them in boards rather than in folders. So uh, you can do a visual bookmark, which is the image, a little description of the image, uh, and then you get to pin it to a board. And the board is really how you classify your collections. Um, and so you can have as many boards as you want. The default is for your board to be public, but you can create um, secret boards. So I think you have a limit of six secret boards um, that, that only you and those you share it with can see. Um, the feed or pin feed is the space when you first log into Pinterest, there'll be a board, there'll be a space online that just shows you all the latest pins from the people that you follow or the boards you follow uh, or areas of interest that you've stated to Pinterest that you have. Uh, and this will kind of constantly move down with the newest, latest pins going to the top. Um, the actions on the board or on Pinterest are pinning mostly, and I use the term repin. It looks like they're getting away from that term and just using pinning uh, now, but kind of like Twitter, if you think about retweeting, the idea is that some of the content you're putting up on Pinterest is, is content that you've found online and pinned to your boards, but some of the some of the content that you're, you're going to be pinning to your boards is actually from other people's boards. So this feed that we have, part of the idea with that feed is that if you see something there that you're interested in, first of all, it might tell you that that's a good person to follow or a good board to follow, um, whatever board it was put on. Or, but it also allows you to say, oh, I like that, I'm going to put it onto my board. And so, you know, you might if we're doing adult education, I might have a board that's called adult education apps for iPads and someone else might have a board called math on the iPad and that pin, a pin they put up about a math app might fall into my, for me, my category of adult ed and for them the category of math. Um, but you can have, as, like I said, you can have as many boards as you want so you might have different categories and you might even pin the same pin into multiple categories or different boards. Um, you can also like people's pins and that's sort of the social aspect of Pinterest beyond following and pinning or repinning their content. You can just let them know that you like what they put up there. Uh, and then there's this concept of following, which is more akin to Twitter in that it's a one-way street compared to Facebook, which is a two-way street. You know, if you follow someone's board or, or you follow a person on Pinterest, there's no requirement that they follow you back or that you follow 
um, that they follow all your boards or whatever. Um, I would say Pinterest is also, for me, more similar to Twitter in that it's not so much about following the people that I know as much as it's about following people who have the same interests that I do. Um, I certainly do follow some friends because we do have similar interests, but I would say the majority of the boards I follow um, I follow because they are specifically interesting to me. So while they all, you know, Facebook, you can connect your Facebook to your Pinterest um, account and it will certainly alert you when your friends become members of Pinterest and vice versa. Um, I won't say you shouldn't follow your friends, but I think you'll tend to find that the most useful way of using Pinterest is to follow people who have similar interests rather than necessarily your relationship with them. And again, obviously, some people that you're friends with, you will have similar interests with. But um, unlike Facebook, where I'm friends with friends, you know, my old friends from junior high, those aren't necessarily the people that I would want to be uh, following on Pinterest by default. Um, so pins are these images. Uh, here you can see a number. I have a board. The, the name of the board is Adult Education Ideas. That's what you're seeing at the top. Um, then you see my name, um, a button to edit the board, and then on the side, on the right side, you can see how many followers of this board there are uh, and how many pins there are on this board. Each of these images is a pin. Um, the reason why I'm talking about Pinterest as a visual bookmarking tool is that if you clicked on any one of these images, it would actually take you out to the website where I found it. So as a responsible member of Pinterest, I try to make sure that wherever I'm getting the image from has more information about the image, um, is a permanent space, a uh, place where that image will sit. Sometimes when people blog, the most recent blog entry will have an image that you like and you will pin that uh, URL. And the problem is that as the, as new content comes into that blog, that sort of new story um, URL will actually no longer point to that old story. So you want to actually make sure that when you're looking at a blog and you find an image that you like, click on the image, get out to the story that's the, the home, it's going to be the actual URL that where it will always be, that's the URL to, to use. And I'll show you in a minute how we, when I'm talking about URLs, the way that you add a pin to your board is by copying the URL to the page where the image is and pasting it into Pinterest. Um, so the nice thing here, so first of all, this is public. If someone was to Google Pinterest adult education ideas, they'd actually come to this board. Um, and then they could go in and they could click on any of these images and go out to where the image was. I could write a short description of why uh, the image was important or why the story was important or this technique was important as part of this pin. Um, and then other people could repin it or like it or so forth. Um, you can also be, have collaborative boards by inviting to any board that you have. You can invite people to be collab to collaborate with you, which means that you could have a single board for the whole class or students could work together in groups um, and create boards where they save their content uh, from the internet. So pins start with an image or video, and video is also available. You can. Um, you can put video on uh, you, on Pinterest, um, and you also can um, the main the main way that you get a pin to your board is as I've mentioned already. Either you find an image on the internet somewhere and pin it by using the URL, um, or you could repin from inside Pinterest, or you could upload an image. To, from your computer into Pinterest. And some teachers, for professional development purposes, you'll find many boards where teachers take pictures of what they've done in class and upload those and then write a description. So those won't go out to a website so much as they are a, a standalone in themselves. Um, but the majority of the ones I do, I have actually never uploaded an image because really the, the, what I'm doing is looking online and sort of curating um, information that I found online. Um, any pin on Pinterest can be repinned, and all pins link back to their source. And I think the linking back to the source, like I said, is the bookmarking co uh, component. Um, you, when I've done this workshop, people have asked about copyright, and uh, Pinterest is handling. So first of all, you're not downloading an image. This image is sitting on a website, and it is actually just a, it's like a hyperlink in a way. So you're going back to where the actual content came from. Um, so that's the first piece. The second piece is that Pinterest has made it possible for 
uh, websites or individual images to have code that say that they cannot be pinned. Uh, so, it, you know, I think artists who work in the visual medium, photographers, painters, so forth, uh, some of them are very sensitive to, to feeling that their content, their images and their work is being used on Pinterest in ways they might not want or without them getting credit. Um, and they do have the ability to make their images from their own websites at least uh, un unpinnable. Um, for the most part, I would say that there's a benefit to being pinned to Pinterest. I mean, I think that you get more exposure, uh, and it can lead, as it can lead back to your website, it can still lead to you receiving credit and you receiving even money uh, as more people find out about your work. But I think there is some controversy there, and, and it's something to be aware of for sure. Um, so once you have your pin idea, the thing you want to pin, you're pinning it to a board, as I mentioned. Um, when you go to Pinterest, you'll see uh, all your boards, and there's always a little larger illustration, and then some of the pins below that. So there's always this little configuration of one big picture and four small pictures below it. You can edit that big picture, and you can um, go in and you know delete pins as you want or add them. Um, what you'll find is that people have a real eclectic variety of boards, and I think that's just fine. If you are doing this for a business or for your agency, you may want to have a separate account just for images around that um, work. But I would also say, as with most social media, having a little bit of a personal is always a little bit of the personal is always appreciated because it feels like we know you better. Uh, so I'm quite fine with having all mine mixed together. Um, I definitely have adult education um, boards and a board on on iPad apps, but then I have a board on you know lighting that I like, on Doctor Who that I like, uh, on tools that I think would, are pretty for my uh, work on my desktop. Uh, and then the winter one here is actually an example that I created for demonstrations of um, Pinterest. So I don't, you know, someone can certainly come on to Pinterest and see my whole account and see all my boards if I've made them public. Um, but I think, as I said, most people are going on here to see a specific board or my pins will show up in their feed because of a specific uh, convergence of interest. So they're not going to, if they follow me, they will get content from all my boards. But if they just follow adult education ideas, they will only get the pins in their feed that are added to that board. So that's how you curate your own feed, uh, is that you can decide to follow a whole person, in which case you'll get their updates from all their boards, um, or you can just follow specific boards and only get the content from those boards. So where's where you organize your pins? Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you can have secret or public boards. And the secret board, when you're creating a board, you just indicate you want it to be secret. You cannot make a public board secret. So once you create a board, um, if you didn't make it secret to start with, it will be public. You'd have to delete it. Uh, but you can move pins from your public board to a secret board or vice versa. Uh, and then you can add other people to, to collaborate with you. And I'm happy. I have several boards I would love to collaborate with people on. So if you're interested at the end, you can get my email address and email me. Uh, and I will um, invite you to collaborate on my adult education boards. Um, so how do you add pins to a board? You copy the URL, the website where the image is located, and you paste it into Pinterest. And when you get to Pinterest, there's a little plus sign. Uh, you click on that, and it says add a pin, and you say yes, and then you can paste your, your in there. And I'll take us out and look at real Pinterest in a moment so we can see how that works. Um, on many websites nowadays, you'll see a, a red square with a white P on it. That's the little icon for Pinterest. So just like you could like it on Facebook or tweet it, uh, you can often pin it straight to Pinterest from the website itself. Um, you can upload your own images to Pinterest, and you can repin from the feed or from another board. Uh, at the bottom here, there are a couple of different examples. So um, on the left is my Pinterest board, and that little red square with a plus sign in it is what I would click on to get that drop down that says um, upload a pin, add from a website, create a board. Um, in the center, that top one with the, the Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google Plus, and RSS feed icons, that's a pretty typical layout uh, that you might see on a website where you could click on one of those and it will take you to that 
it will share the content from that website via that tool. Um, below that is um, from YouTube. So YouTube now, if you just, as you scroll over the image of the video as it's sitting on your, uh, you know, if you've searched YouTube and you come up with a list of videos, as you scroll over the image of the video, it will actually give you a pin it button right there. Um, and then the right side is actually what, what it looks like once you click on a pin inside Pinterest, um, it gets it becomes larger and you get your pin it button up at the top left side, the top top left corner. Um, so the feed, like I said, is a general mishmash of all the boards you follow, all the topics you follow, all the people you follow. And so if there's a, someone, you know, I have, I have certain friends maybe who live on the West Coast who might be pinning a lot at night. And when I come on in the morning, there'll be a lot of pins from them. And if they have a certain thing they're looking for, and I think you'll find as you use Pinterest, that tends to be, you know, you're inspired by something or you're looking for something specific. And so there'll be a, a, a little bit of a glut of pins around that particular topic. Uh, you know, I think I follow a woman who maybe every now and then will be like, I think I was looking through my feed the other day and there was suddenly a lot of yellow images. So she was making a board about yellow, perhaps. Um, so you'll see it's kind of like a river, right? Like it's just whatever is falling in the river um, in a chronological order. If you find that you have someone who, you know, fills up your feed with things you're not so interested in, you can go out and stop following them or maybe um, edit how many boards of theirs that you follow. Um, as you add new pins yourself or new boards yourself, you'll find that new uh, content will come into your feed. Um, Pinterest is a very, you know, it came after Facebook and Twitter and it really seemed to me that the people who created it learned a lot from the combination of Facebook and Twitter. Um, I think they pulled together sort of the best of both worlds. So uh, again, the fact that it's a one-way street, so it's my responsibility to curate according to my interests rather than sort of social mores of, you know, being nice to each other and if you follow me, I'll follow you. Um, and that way Pinterest is a lot more like Twitter. So I think, again, it feels to me more about information and useful um, combinations of, of interests rather than friendships. Um, but it does a, But one of the challenges, I think, with Twitter for folks is when you first start Twitter, how do you find people to follow? Uh, and so many people started Twitter accounts and never got very far because it, it just never, they just never got past finding people to follow. Um, with, with Pinterest, they do a great job. So when you first create your account, you kind of don't even notice, but they ask you at some point to select all the things you're interested in, and it's a really long list, and it, it's exciting, and you click off lots of things, and later on you realize that that's, that's how they start your feed, uh, is by that list of things that you said you liked. I think you can go in and edit that later on if you want to. Um, so be aware of that. That's a, that's a moment in the, in the process of joining Pinterest. Um, you can access Pinterest boards without having an account. If you just, what I do is I Google the word Pinterest followed by the, the search term I have. So if you're looking for um, images of polar bears and you type Pinterest and then polar bears in your search, um, you'll get returns that are primarily Pinterest boards with that, with that, with those words in them. So you can see people's boards even if you don't have an account. But if you have an account, then once you're looking at those boards, you could follow them or, or um, repin any of the images from those boards. Uh, as I mentioned, repinning, liking, and following. So when I'm on, I find an image that I, I like or it looks like an interesting story or an interesting um, link. I would click on it. It would get larger, so it would look like this um, with the right side being kind of shaded out. And then at the upper left corner, I'll have the pin it button. So if I click on that, I can now pin this and it will ask me which board I want to pin it to. I can like this. I can go out to the site without even clicking on the picture. I tend to click on the picture to go out to the site. Um, I can send this to other people via email to let them know that it's here. Um, and then at the bottom, I can actually comment on it. So, you, you know, I can imagine in an educational situation where students maybe for homework have to add one or two pins um, and then people can, you know, in class are required to, you know, write a response to one or two of the pins that were posted. It could be on a specific topic. So, uh, you know, when Abraham Lincoln movie was out, um, maybe wanted folks to go out for homework to research Lincoln, uh, and this could both, in my mind, with that particular lesson, the idea would be that people, you know, would have an opportunity, maybe in class, maybe on the phone, maybe at work or home, uh, to search for at least two images of Lincoln, add those to the Pinterest board for the whole class where you're collaborating, and then come to class and explain 
um, why you picked those images, and then go out to those actual websites and see if they're really trustworthy, because odds are somebody's going to bring in an image that comes from a website that maybe is not so trustworthy, and so this is a great opportunity then to talk about, you know, is, I, mean, the, I don't know that there's a website out there that says this, but is Lincoln, you know, is Lincoln an alien? Uh, you know, is that true, and why would, how did you make that, how would you determine whether a website looks like it's accurate or not, or what looks official and what doesn't? Um, so it can lead to multiple conversations, not only the image, and the content from the website, but also how do you do a safe search? Um, you know, what are the critical thinking skills you need? And we're moving into a world nowadays where, you know, so especially if students are moving towards getting their high school equivalency diploma, where a lot of the high school equivalency tests now are, are at least partially online, if not entirely online, uh, or on a computer screen, I should say. Um, and one of the things I've heard that's challenging is that the tests, these tests, the GD, the TASC, the high set, they are challenging tests. Um, they take a long time, and if you're not used to reading content on a, a screen, that's going to be a real challenge for you. And I know certainly, pop, depending on your um, generation, but maybe more your own just life experience, some people, you know, still like to print things out and read them that way. And in this case, you're going to have to read them on a screen, and you're going to be reading on a screen for quite a few hours, which again is not what most of us do. So. Using Pinterest as a way to either lead your students to specific locations online or for them to share with you and lead you to specific locations online um, or as prompts to conversations in, for, for conversations in class, um, all those things I think Pinterest can be incredibly valuable for. And one of the things here is that I'm looking for tools always that students will, can use in the classroom, but then when they go home or go to the library, they can access the same information very easily, and Pinterest is like that it's a, you know it's an online bookmarking tool so that if they're in class and they find something they like and they put it onto Pinterest then when they go to Pinterest from their home computer or their library computer or their phone they can get to that link again and that seems very valuable also that people you know they're not confined to working on this work while they're in your lab Ah, so that answers all the questions about why why to use Pinterest in adult education um, I do think that one of the challenges we have when we as teachers are trying to collect um, a number of online resources, the challenge is how do you share those resources? And I would say beyond even being a teacher in this case, um, even as a professional developer or as a colleague in a group session situation where I need to share um, links to some different websites, how do I do that? And I think that we, um, or in this case too, you could have them needing to share with you, the, you know, them sharing with themselves so they can access them after they left the classroom. Uh, and the tools that I think people tend to use, maybe you're using a wiki or you send an email with those links in it. Uh, maybe there's a website you've created where you put those links um, or an online community like the links community or the or a Wigio community or a blog, some, some place online where you can update easily and people know they can come back and find those links. And those are all valuable. But I will say that one of the challenges I have in my own response to um, especially things like wikis or a website where it's really just a list of links, you know, maybe it's a bulleted list of links that you're saying here are 10 links on Abraham Lincoln that I find <clears throat> it hard to be drawn into which links do I want to click on. It just feels a little exhausting. Uh, and this is kind of an example of, a, of actually very nicely put together wiki uh, on Web 2.0 tools, but you can see here it's quite dry, right? There's there's a, a list of links uh, with a short description of the links, which is very nice, but it's still, I, I, I find myself very easily looking away without really reading any of these, and so I think I'm probably going to miss out on some of the content because I'm just, my eye just doesn't quite know where to sit, uh, and it, it just, sort of overwhelms my senses. And again, that could just be me. I'm maybe a little bit more of a visual person. Uh, but I think it's pretty true for human beings that we're kind of, we might all, some of us might have better skills at going in and reading all these words and, and making, making meaning. But I think if we had something like this, 
where, again, this is Web 2.0 tools, it's an actual Pinterest board someone created. This is a really a list of links, right? But they, but because we get to see the little image of the, of the actual uh, app and a little description of it there, maybe I at least feel like I can kind of scan over it pretty quickly and at least find one that I want to jump on. Um, and so I think the images make it richer. So the outcome is the same. My, you know, my goal was to have a space online where people could go to get the content uh, that I wanted them to get to, but the visual pleasure or um, attractiveness is increased. And I will say also that it's very, very, very easy to use. So with a wiki, um, certainly I've used wikis and, I'm, and I don't find them terribly hard to use, but I think there's several steps involved in adding things to the wiki and you, because it's also sort of a free structure, often you have to um, have sets of rules about if you're having other people add content, uh, that there are style guides and rules about how you add new content. Um, so they're not, they, you know, they can be a little trickier for collaborative work, um, where, where with Pinterest, because it's sort of a set layout, there's no need for anybody to be guided, it's, it's already guiding you. Uh, and then also um, just the ease of having several people with their own accounts still being able to access a single board together I think is really a uh, helpful aspect of this where with the other, some of the other tools they would all have to log in with the same account and so forth. So how do you use Pinterest in education? Um, as I've just been describing, I think sharing resources with learners is a pretty obvious way to use Pinterest. Um, I do think the collaborative space online is a valuable aspect of Pinterest that's particularly easy to do, where some of these other tools um, make it a little harder. Uh, someone asked me um, when they, when I would use Pinterest versus Evernote, uh, and I do, Evernote is a wonderful tool. I use it a lot for myself, and I have shared, so Evernote is, is a, is a, um, a note-taking platform that you can have on all your devices. So if I take notes on my in Evernote on my computer and I open up Evernote on my phone, the the notes will have synced very quickly onto my phone. So I can access the content across my devices. Um, and there is a collaborative element to uh, Evernote where you could share a folder on Evernote or as they would say a notebook on Evernote. Uh, and I have done that. I I don't use it for images so much. I have colleagues who've used it for images. You do get a memory, um, there's a memory limit if you aren't a pro member. Uh, and a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, um, experienced that when she was at a conference and she took a lot of pictures and wanted to write notes about the pictures. Um, she found that she used up all her memory for that month which would be another downside. So in her case, if she was using Pinterest, she could have uploaded all those images and written her notes in Pinterest. Um, the downside of Pinterest is that you would definitely need to have internet access whenever you wanted to utilize it, where with Evernote, once you've taken your notes and it's synced across the platforms, then you can actually access that information even when you don't have internet. And that, that is actually one of the things I really use it for when I know, you know, I'm at work so I have internet access, I put things into, uh, into my Evernote and then when I get somewhere that doesn't have internet access, I can still read the content on my phone or whatever. Um, Pinterest would not work that way. So Pinterest does require uh, internet action, internet access in the moment that you're using it. Um, then beyond those two aspects of actually, you know, making Pinterest a place where you're sharing resources with people you know, um, there is the aspect of, of finding new people to know via their uh, pins on Pinterest. So as I mentioned earlier, the idea for me with Pinterest is to find people with similar interests. So if I have a particular interest in using social media with adults, I can now find people across the world who have similar interests and are sharing content uh, specifically on that, which is incredibly valuable. So for me as a person in my work, that's really valuable. I can only imagine that for your students, it would similarly be something valuable for them to find other people in the world who had a particular interest that they did. It might not be about education, right? It might be that they all loved a certain kind of car or um, they've worked very specifically with a type of tool or something like that, uh, but to find those other people and to learn new information as it comes out by sharing a board, or not even that, just having them as part of your feed by following them, uh, I think can be a really valuable 
experience in what it means to find a personal learning network, to find other people out in the world who you'll never, never necessarily meet face to face with, but who are sharing content that is related to what you're interested in. Um, there are lots of links inside this PowerPoint um, that will take you out to some actual lessons and some ways that people are using Pinterest. I'm going to put this PowerPoint up on a slide share and then you can get this to those links. Um, there are also a lot of businesses and interesting organizations that have created Pinterest boards. Um, this is a list of 25 libraries that have done amazing things with Pinterest. Um, there's an educational technology Pinterest board. Uh, and then there's a board of five minute videos um, on teaching and learning that are, that are on Pinterest. So there's a lot of ways to incorporate Pinterest itself and even how, how to use Pinterest. Um, it's not all, there is a tendency because of the visual quality, I think, there's a, an immediate, um, K through 12 has probably had a quick response to seeing how Pinterest could be useful and, and I see a lot of the content out there as being K through 12, but actually colleges are seeing that value as well and I think now we can say that adult ed does too, uh, so it's very exciting to see that adult ed, or that uh, professors are using it as well. Uh, I am going to take us out now uh, to show you the process of using Pinterest live. Um, so I'm going to share my desktop with you. All right, so this is my Pinterest feed. I'm already logged into Pinterest. Um, and if I ever get lost or if you ever get lost inside Pinterest, you can always click on the, the little Pinterest uh, logo and it will take you back to your feed. So if you get lost, Pinterest is where you need to go. As I mentioned earlier, there's this little red box, little square with a white um, plus sign on it. If I click on that, I can upload a pin, which would be uploading a picture, add from a website, or create a new board. Um, I can also go see my boards by clicking on my name. So um, my profile and pins. So these are all my um, boards, and the boards are listed in the order by default in the order that you've created them in, but you can sort them if you want to. Um, they can be a little hard to search for through if they're not, if they're done chronologically, but um, so you're welcome to move them around. Um, you can see how many followers you have, how many people you're following, how many boards you have, um, how many pins you have, how many, how many things have been liked. Um, you can send your profile to other people so they can follow you more easily. Um, as you scroll down, like I said, there's a variety of, of boards here. Uh, it's up to other people to decide which ones they want to follow. So if you were going to follow my adult education ideas, I've got 71 pins here. Um, if I click on it, it's going to take me to that board. Um, so here's the board with all the pins on it. Again, they're, chron they're chronological by when I've added them on. Um, and as you scroll through, you know, something really catches your eye, you click on it. So as I scroll over, you already get the pin it option and the send and the edit. Uh, but if I click on it, it will become enlarged so I can look at it a little bit better. And as I scroll down, I can see the description. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> Oh, my computer's decided to be a little wacky. Let's see here. There we go. So if I scroll down, you can see um, there's a description, and then other people could comment there. Um, if I want to go out to the actual website, I click on the image. And it's good to check on images before you repin them because sometimes people have done it in a way that's not so useful. So this is from Flickr, uh, which is nice um, in that it's a very nice image, but it means it's not actually on a website where there's more explanation. But this is a really interesting uh, timeline. And depending on, on Flickr, they could have written the description. Yeah, there's not much of a description, but you could even find this person maybe and communicate with them if you were interested in that. Um, let me go back to my Pinterest. Um, and then to get back out of this, I click on the X and I'm back into my general um, board. 
Um, so let's say that we wanted to add a pin to a board, right? So first of all, I mean, this is a little artificial because usually it starts off with you already having an image in mind, but what I want to find an image. Um, and say we've been doing a project, as you saw, I have a board called Winter. Um, so I want to add a pin that's related to Winter. I'm going to look up um, Snow Mobiles. And I'm going to click Enter. I'm using Chrome. And the first search I'm going to get back is just the web search. What is helpful for Pinterest is actually go to the image search. Um, now, this is going to prioritize the image over the content. So when you pick on an image, you still want to go in and see if the content is useful or at least not offensive. Uh, and say we really like, like, I like this guy. This is a huge snowmobile. And I can see already this Wikipedia, which I'm fine with. So I'm going to go click on that and go out to the actual website. Um, so there's going to be a number of images here, and as you see, as I scroll over it, I get the pin it button. Um, so there's going to be a bunch of images. So when I so the next step is for me to copy this URL. I'm going to do the Control C for copy, and then I'm going to go back to uh, Pinterest, and I'm going to click the little plus sign and add from a website. And now I'm going to control V to paste it in there. I'm going to click next. And it's going to show me all the images on the page. So I get to decide which one I want. And I actually might have found other ones that look more interesting. I think this is a video. So I'm actually going to pin this one. We'll go back out and see what it looks like. Um, now I have to choose which board it goes on. So I'm going to add it to winter. And in this case, it is alphabetical. So click on winter. You do have to write a description. Um, snowmobiles in action, I'm going to call this. Now, you could write a long treatise here, right? So if you, if this is an image that you were um, uploading, you might write a description of what you actually did. Um, I could write something like, you know, really great information about how fast snowmobiles go or something like that. So again, I'm doing it a little artificially now. If you, if you really knew why you were sharing that image, you would have more information to put in here. I'm going to click pin it. And I want to see it. Oops, I didn't see it. Click it fast enough. So now I'm going to go back to my boards. Let's go to my profile pins. Um, and this is my winter board, so I'm going to click on it. And here is the snowmobiles in action. And maybe it wasn't a video. No, well, it'll take me back out to snowmobiles. There you go. So it's not a video. Let's see. I thought I saw a video down there. Yeah, so there it is. Right. So again, and, and YouTube, if you did put it in, would be a video. I don't know why this one is a video on this page and an image from my page. But anyway, so now I have, um, so just to show you, if I go back up here in, the, in my tabs, you can see this is my Pinterest. When I click this, it goes out to the actual page in a separate tab. Uh, and I can close these tabs now. Um, excellent. So that's that. I am going to go back to our PowerPoint. Um, let me go back over here. So. Um, there are some other ways um, to use it in, in, in education in general, but I think we've talked mostly about this idea of curating content, um, certainly the aspect of organizing ideas. So if you, even as a lesson, you could have a number of images inside Pinterest and have people rearrange them. Um, you could have people identify which image is the image that you're describing. Um, so there's a number of ways to use Pinterest, I think, in to make the lesson you're already doing around images and description or organizing ideas um, into something a little bit more fun. Um, certainly the collaboration aspect of Pinterest is really exciting and useful. And then um, the fact that students, it's, it's so simple to use that students can learn very quickly how to do it. Even if you're nervous around technology, I think you can, you can practice enough to get, feel comfortable to be able to do it with your students. And so uh, it becomes a very level playing field for your students um, to also uh, share their knowledge, which is really, I think, always a valuable thing in adult ed. 
Um, I do have an evaluation for this webinar, uh, so if you want to go to this link, you can um, give me some feedback on the content and presentation of this webinar. Um, and I think that's it for today. We do have another uh, webinar coming up in a week on the advanced aspects of Twitter or advanced tools to use with Twitter, uh, so I look forward to seeing you there. Certainly, as I mentioned earlier, if you are interested in collaborating on a board, uh, feel free to contact me via email um, or find my Pinterest board and comment there and we'll find each other that way. All right, thank you so much.